Covent Garden in the morning. Cherries so red, strawberries ripe. At home, of course, they'll be storming. Never mind the abuse. We have the excuse. We, we went to Covent Garden, Garden in the morning. Dear old pals, jolly old pals, clinging together in all sorts. The boy I love is up in the gallery. The boy I love is looking now at me. Babe, can't you see? Waving his handkerchief as merry as a robin that sings on a tree. This is Wilton's, one of the oldest music halls still standing. There aren't many music halls left nowadays, and today I've come to where it all started, a stone's throw from Big Ben next to the Waterloo Railway Arches. Centuries ago, right here in the heart of London, pilgrims on their way from Westminster to Canterbury Cathedral made their first stopping place a tavern built on Lambeth marshes called the Canterbury Arms. Around the middle of the last century, Charles Morton became the landlord and started Saturday night entertainment in the parlour, which held about a hundred customers, men only, of course. The use of a piano was forbidden by law, but the singers got by with violins and banjos instead. This Saturday night lark became so popular that Morton extended it to Thursdays as well, when ladies were admitted. A bold step then. 
Before you could say up the apples and pears, the place became so popular that Morton built a special hall at the back of the pub. The Canterbury became such a mecca for Cockneys wanting a good cheap night out that by Christmas 1854, a second hall was opened. Extra rooms were soon added, alterations made to satisfy the enormous demand for admission. And before long, it was a real palace of entertainment. It had a large entrance hall, smartly furnished, an enormous aquarium where Morton presented over 200 kinds of fish, a restaurant, a large picture gallery, a tropical garden, and here's all that's left of the promenade, lined with sparkling mosaic. Once through the promenade and under the railway arch, the customers could either go to the stalls or climb the stairs to the gallery. At first, the rostrum was no more than a platform, but soon a fully equipped stage was built and the air conditioning of the auditorium was easily controlled by a sliding roof. The sets became more ornate and several of the spectacles staged at the old Canterbury have never been bettered. Eventually, the place became so famous that royalty graced it with their presence. Yes, Morton had hit the jackpot all right and the music hall arrived on the entertainment map in a big way. With the rise of the halls, the artists who'd previously been hard pushed to make a living found themselves in great demand. Many became stars almost overnight, and George Laban set the pop scene alight with his Champagne Charlie. Names like the Great Vance, Harry Clifton, E.W. Mackney, J.W. Rowley, and Charles Godfrey became big favourites. Later artists like Harry Champion, Ada Reeve and Vesta Tilly found themselves playing three or even four different theatres each night. Many of the stars of the staid Victorian age wore real mod gear and they became known as swells or mashers. They knew how to mix their colours, try out new styles and weren't afraid to let their hair grow long. So you can see Every generation has its mods, and whilst those of a century ago had the holes in which to show off their gear, the mashers of today have only a small back alley for their stage, known the world over as Carnaby Street. <laughs> I've got no hoof, but I always place food. I'm a rickety, rickety bloke. I'm as happy as the Prince of Wales, although I'm stony broke. When I go out, the people shout, oh, here he comes clear the way. They think I'm a millionaire, they do from Johannesburg in South Africa. 
think that I've got time to stop in the bank. I'm thoroughly broke, you know. I'm a slasher, a dasher, the up-to-date measure. I'm Percy from Bimlico. I'm Percy from Bimlico. A hundred years ago, the Strand was one of the main theatrical centres in London. Just as congested then, wasn't it? Let's all go down the Strand. Let's all go down the Strand. I'll be leader, you can march behind. Come with me and see what we can find. Let's all go down the Strand. Oh, what a happy land. The place for fun and noise, all among the girls and boys. So let's all go down the strand, have a banana. At the Fleet Street end, the Gaiety was built and became famous as the home of musical comedy and the Gaiety Girls with their stage door Johnnies. Simpson's Tavern, still famous for its roast beef and other typically English food at its best, remained on this site for 58 years and then moved to its present position in 1904. The Savoy welcomes thousands of celebrities to London each season, including a host of stage stars. As we've seen, the origins of music halls started as singing concerts in the pubs during the early 19th century, and the Coal Hole was a typical tavern of the day, though with rather a dubious reputation for some of its career. Thackeray immortalised it as the Black Kitchen in Pendennis. Champagne was drunk out of many a dainty slipper at that famous romantic restaurant in the Strand, Romano's. Nearby, where a busy department store stands today, there was, until not so very long ago, one of the most lively music halls, the Tivoli. Here, every great star appeared, and many ghosts must walk the spot today. Next to the Tivoli is Villiers Street, and tucked away under another railway arch, is Music Hall reincarnated every night. Where the old Gatti's Music Hall once stood, we have the Players' Theatre, with its Victorian-style chairman nightly welcoming guests from home and overseas. Now then. What a splendid evening. Have we any other anniversaries? Any impending matrimonials? Any... Somebody going to get married? Keep it in the family. Is it? Come on, yeah! Soap powders, dear. <laughs> Works fast and leaves no ring. Now then! <laughs> we have, whatever the days, many congratulations in advance. We have a song, Mr. Braun. Poor little lambs. <laughs> Number five, oh, the berries! May I point out for any newcomers in our midst of whom there are a few, this is not just a chorus song. This is the Flair Theatre Anthem. So let us make our nightly attempt to raise the roof and to hell with the London, Chatham and Dover Railway. Sleepers, away! back to the ladies and personally speaking I was never away and introduced for the first time this evening your very own Miss Sheila Burnett. 
Come with us now to the nursery to hear the trials and tribulations of the youngest member of the late Joys as she sings plaintively, Why do they always pick on me? Ladies and gentlemen, your very own little Miss Sheila Burnett. <laughs> Around the corner from the players at Villiers Street is Trafalgar Square, with Nelson keeping his good eye on millions of visitors every year. They come from far and wide to feed the pigeons, have photographs taken, admire the fountains, and gaze at the statues. Being one of London's greatest landmarks, Trafalgar Square has inspired several music hall songs. The most famous, sung now by Stanley Holloway who had a long run in music hall and review before finding international fame as the Cockney father in My Fair Lady. Today I've been busy removing and I'm all of a fidgety fidge. My last digs were on the embankment, the third seat from Waterloo Bridge. But the cooking and oh, the attendance didn't happen to suit me so well, so I ordered my man to pack up and uh, look out for another hotel. He did, and the new place is extra, I vow. Just wait till I tell you where I'm staying now. I live in Trafalgar Square with four lions to guard me. Fountains and statues all over the place And the metropole staring me right in the face I own it's a trifle drafty But I look at it this way, you see If it's good enough for Nelson It's quite good enough for me The beds ain't as soft as they might be Still the temperature's never too high and it's nice to see swells who are passing look on you with envious eye. And then when you wake in the morning, just fancy how nice it must be to have a good walk for your breakfast and the same for your dinner and tea. There's many a swell up in Park Lane tonight who'd be glad if he only had my appetite. I live in Trafalgar Square with more lions to guard me. Fountains and statues all over the place and the metropole staring me right in the face. I alone it's a trifle drafty, but I look at it this way, you see. 
If it's good enough for Nelson, it's quite good enough for me. And London, with its happy, colourful costermongers, has inspired many comedians. Alec Hurley, a singer of many costa ditties, took advantage of the vogue for these songs in the 90s. He was the second of Marie Lloyd's three husbands. Albert Chevalier, who sang My Old Dutch, the most popular of all costa songs, was originally a straight actor and started his musical career filling in between his other engagements. He appeared here and in America and earned the title The Costa Laureate. Cockneys are particularly famous for their quick humour and have produced many wonderful musical stars, but perhaps the king of all Costa comics was Gus Elam. One of his best-known songs, recorded on a rare piece of film when he was over 70, is It's a Great Big Shame. I've lost my pal, he's the best in all the town. But don't you think him dead because he ain't? But since he's wed, he has had to knuckle down. It's enough to whip the temper of a saint. He's a brewer's driver with a leg of mutton fish and as strong as a bullet or an horse. Yet in her hands he's like a little kid. Oh, I wish that I could get him a divorce. Well, it's a great big shame, and if she belonged to me, I'd let her know her will. A nagging at a fella, what is six foot three, and her only four foot two. They hadn't been married not a month nor a mile, when underneath her pump goes Jim. How oh, isn't it a pity as the likes of her should part upon the likes of him? I don't suppose this market has changed much since the days when Hoxton was well known for its local music hall. Today, there are only traces of one of them left, the Britannia, once especially popular for its spectacular pantomimes. All that remains are these columns, still supporting the initials SL, standing for Sarah Lane, who ran the Britannia so successfully for many years. Sarah was one of the large Lane family, and later her descendant, Lupino Lane, made a great favourite of his song, The Lamp... Hey! Marie Lloyd was born and raised among the market stalls of Hoxton. Like several other music hall stars, she had a warm and generous personality and gave every ounce of her energy to please clamorous audiences. Her many songs had a saucy flavour to which her even saucier wink added an innuendo often not apparent in the words. Numbers like, Oh Mr Porter, A Little of What You Fancy, I'm one of the ruins Cromwell knocked about a bit. Lardy duty day. And this one. McDonald's, the oldest Hoxton music hall opened over a hundred years ago, is still standing and is well looked after by the Quakers, who run it as a busy social centre. 
Music hall shows are held here regularly, and audiences flock in from all over London to join the locals in enjoying the show. Take my morning promenade, quite a fashion card on the promenade. Now I don't mind nice boys staring hard. If it satisfies their desires, well, if you think my dress is a little bit, just a little bit, but not too much of it. If it shows my shape just a little bit, well, that's the little bit the boys admire. When I take my morning promenade, quite a fashion card on the promenade. Well, I don't mind nice boys staring hard. On stage, please, Barry Chat and Terry Garvey. Any questions? <laughs> now, back in the days of 1920, there was an age of peace and plenty. Everyone felt so gay, they wanted to sing all day. Now the songs that they wrote made a mint of money, but to us now they sound so funny. So here are a few, corny it's true, that we'd like to sing for you. Now, since the world began, it was heaven's plan uh, There should be a girl for every single man uh, But to my regret, someone has upset Heaven's pretty program for we never, never met I'm clutching at straws just because I may meet him yet. Somebody loves me, I wonder who. I wonder who he can be. Don't know the old think that impersonators are new on the scene, but music hall audiences have always given them a big welcome. Dan Leno, as well as being a master comedian, is remembered as one of the greatest of all pantomime dames. When he died in 1904, at the early age of 43, crowds three deep for over three miles watched his funeral. Vesta Tilly, with immaculate male attire, became known as the London Idol. Her famous songs and character studies of men about town, soldiers and sailors, made music hall history. Another male impersonator was Ella Shields, who first conquered London audiences way back in 1910. Everyone knows her hit song, 
Burlington Bertie from Bow. So if you feel like singing, well, why not have a go? I'm Burlington Bertie. I ride at 10.30 and sauntered along like a toy. I walk down the strand with my gloves on my hand and I walk down the gate with them all. I'm all airs and graces, collect easy pigs. So long without food, I forgot where my face is. I'm burnt. Burnt, I have a shirt. But my people are well off, you know. Well, nearly everyone knows me, from Smith to Lord Rosemary. I'm Burlington Bertie from Bow. I'm Burlington Bertie. I rise at 10.30, then Buckingham Palace, I view. I stand in the yard while they're changing the guard. The king shouts across to the loo. The prince of Wales, brother, along with some other, slaps me on the back and says, come and see mother. I'm burnt, burnt, royalty's hurt. When they ask me to dine, I say no. I've just had a banana with Lady Diana. I'm burning to Bertie from Bow. But amongst the girls who preferred to appear feminine, Flo Hastings first performed in the Pitfield Varieties in Hoxton in 1880 and was an active artist for at least another 80 years. As was Ada Reeve, who made one of her first West End appearances in 1888 at the Players Theatre, at that time known as the Hungerford. Murray Kendall, another star who had an equally long career, had become a firm favourite by the mid-90s. She made a big hit at the Royal Command performance held at the Palace Theatre in 1912, with King George V and Queen Mary present. This historic occasion was perhaps the peak of music hall and variety, and was an official recognition of their position in the entertainment world. After that, the decline seems to have set in. First music halls and then variety theatres began to close. But one stronghold, the world-renowned Palladium, held out. Virtually every great name has trod its boards and had butterflies in their stomachs as the house lights dimmed and the curtains parted. It still plays to packed houses every night, even in this television age. One part of London that was a music hall fortress is Leicester Square. The plush empire, with its notorious promenade, patronised by ladies of the town, has become a cinema and ballroom. And of course the Alhambra, today, one of London's most modern cinemas. Another old music hall which keeps going very successfully is the Victoria Palace, originally the Royal Standard. In recent years, it's become the home of the black and white minstrels. In 1927, a royal variety show was held here, and perhaps the biggest hit of the evening was that energetic comedienne, Lily Morris. Why am I dressed in these beautiful clothes? What is the matter with me? I've been a bridesmaid for 22 brides. This one will make 23. 22 maidens I've helped off the shelf. No doubt it seems a bit strange. Being the bridesmaid is no good to me. And I think I could do with a change. Why am I always a bridesmaid? Never the blushing a bride. Ding dong, wedding bells. Only ring for other girls. But one more fine day. Oh, let it be soon. I shall wake up in the morning on my own honeymoon. Perhaps we shall never again see an age which can produce so many great artists. Little is left to remind one of the splendours of these Victorian days. 
most of its stages are already gone. The Empire, Islington, and the Camden Town, Bedford, are ready for demolition. But the tradition still lives on. Sit back now and enjoy the spirit of Music Hall as it's carried on today in the restaurants, theatres, and pubs, such as this one in North London, the Pegasus. Our next guest we introduce you, I'm sure you're going to be nice to a Miss Terry Day. Shirley Temple. <laughs> All the world loves the fat girl, uh, so everybody loves my ex. All the world loves the fat girl, uh, we all know that's a fact. I'm bigger and better than any slim miss. You get me for your money with a figure like this. All the world loves the fat girl, and that's why. Much. I like to sing to you now the late and great Sophie Tucker's Some of These Days. Some of these days, are you gonna miss me, my honey? Some of these days, are you gonna feel so lonely? Are you gonna miss my honey? Are you gonna miss my
Harry Champion. Everybody knows him. Everybody knows him. Everybody knows him in his old brown hat, brown hat. Everybody knows him. Everybody knows him. Everybody knows him. Everybody knows him in his old brown hat. And can't get a sun, but the day comes at last when your oof is your up, and directly you gets it, you're off to a pub. It's wonderful now what some women will do on Saturday. Saturday. They can't only jaw, they do something else too on Saturday. Saturday. Give the missus four bob, send her off round the town. She'll turn all the butcher shops clean upside down. And you'll get the week scrub for about half a crown on Saturday. Oh, Saturday, that's the day for me. We have a fair old vino and we spend our LSD. On Monday morning we are always B R O K E. Oh, Saturday, that's the day for me. Oh, Saturday. Stuffy lobby, go! Make your feet to the kitchen, well, don't lift up vegetarians. On food, they give the rabbits. Your fortune, I blow out your cannonball, even carrots. I like pickled onions, I like pickled lily. 
upon the spotty duff with eager longing eyes and when you sniffed a good old Irish stew well you get a kind of feeling that you'd like to go inside and you linger longer don't you linger longer linger long oh the longer you linger you linger long alone. Now don't say you can't, because I'm certain that you do. When your poor inside is empty and you sniff an Irish stew, well, the longer you linger, the longer you linger. Everybody knows him in his old brown hat, brown hat. Everybody knows him in his old brown hat, brown hat. Everybody knows him, 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 everyb
yo. See me in me old brown hat, that's all folks. See me in me old brown hat, that's all folks. See me in me old brown hat. Give me old eye, give me old eye, boy, I'll be the carrot. Oh, a little bit of cucumber, 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 and with the end, like a water mouth, give me old eye, brown hat. And you so good, Marty.